In Romans 15, Paul writes that justice, peace, and joy are communal essentials for life in the kingdom of God. In verse 7, Paul says to accept one another in the same way the anointed has accepted you so that God will get the praise he is due. Paul continues by quoting Old Testament scripture from Psalm 18, For this I will praise you among the nations and sing praises to your name. Praise the Lord, all nations. Raise your voices, all people. Let your praises flow to God. Methodist Church. We're so happy that you've joined us for Sunday worship. Today is Peace with Justice Sunday, as well as Trinity Sunday, as well as Holy Communion. We hope that you'll participate with us in the communion liturgy. If you have grape juice or water or any type of juice at home and bread or crackers, you can have those ready when we start communion. So let us worship this day.
There are many places around our world today where people do not know peace because they do not know justice. One of these places which I hold in deep prayer is our own country. On this Peace with Justice Sunday, we see great unrest in each state across the U.S. We are witnessing historic moments on the world stage some extremely heartbreaking, and others, such as the historic test flight of SpaceX Dragon Crew, exciting. It reminds me of the moment the Apollo 8 astronauts circled the moon for the first time, snapped unforgettable photos of Earth from the moon. And on Christmas Day, they said, we have a message to share and proceeded to read Genesis 1 from space. Looking back to Earth, well, NASA was swamped with notes, and one was from a woman noting how horrible a year it had been with riots, Vietnam, the assassinations of Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy, and her note simply said, thank you for saving 1968. Well, I'd say 2020, is another 1968. And the saving will only come from our Creator. We read a passage that I believe is a scripture that speaks to us during this time and what we should do as people of faith. Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. All of the events around the world, in our country and in our cities, have brought us lots of feelings. I've thought to myself as a pastor, how can I speak into this time of shock and hurt and anger and sadness and pain and frustration, worry, fear, and so much more. We are aware and have read lots of comments and viewpoints, some polarizing and dividing and some seeking to bring us together. Some are life and community destroying and some are life and compassion giving. Some are connection and community building. I've seen parents try to explain what is happening in our country with their children while also facing a global pandemic and trying to keep their children safe. All of those parents wishing they did not have to explain something like this and wanting a better world for them, a world that is less fearful, less angry, less violent, less divided, a better world that is more hopeful and more loving. I've also thought of all the children of all ethnicities, especially those who are black, I want a better world for them. I want a better world for you. That we do not have to be afraid. No one has to be hurt by violence and no one has to feel isolated. I want a better world for you that is peace and justice oriented. I want a better world designed by God and the kingdom of God and what God desires with care and compassion, well-being for all creation life-giving and loving. It's the peaceable kingdom where the lion and the lamb lay down together. The little children shall lead them. Every person is a child of God. Every person has sacred worth. As the parable of the Good Samaritan shares, every person is our neighbor. Every person is loved by God. There are people and groups who are working to build a better world. People peacefully protesting who are seeking an end to racism, social barriers, and economic injustice. 
people laying down arms and praying with one another, people seeing each other as human beings of great worth. But it takes more. It takes more. Our world seems to be heading towards more violence and division. We hear so much of hurtful words. In our fear and judging, we do and say things that hurt, harm, divide, and destroy. In judging words on social media, in gossiping about other people, in turning our backs on relationships, in engaging in us versus them viewpoints. We all do it. We all contribute to the problem, including me. Do we really want the better world, the peaceable kingdom? Then it starts with me. It starts with each of us. The direction our world is heading will not change unless I change, each of us changes, we change. To be more loving, more life-giving, more community building, and most of all, living more like Jesus in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. To change our world, we start by changing us. And the first step is prayer. We pray for all those who have been touched by violence, families of those killed and injured. We need prayer. Prayer is enough because God answers prayer. God can do more than we can ever ask or imagine. Praying is trusting in God. Praying is an act of trust and faith. We let go of our own agenda. We admit that we're helpless and need God's help. And we ask God to take over. We surrender to the moment and the situation. Yet, prayer is not enough for us and what we need to do. Our lives need to be prayer in the midst of what we say and do. We need to live out those prayers. We need to reflect God's love and grace. We represent Christ. We're filled with the Holy Spirit, and our world needs prayerful and faithful people that do justice, that love kindness, that walk humbly with the Lord. Our world also needs people doing more in bringing about peace and justice and creating a better world. Our scripture from the Old Testament, the prophet Micah guides us forward. We're called to do justice. Justice in the biblical understanding is more than judging right from wrong. It's accountability. Justice restores, reconciles, and renews. Justice is connected with peace. They go hand in hand for the well-being of all people and all creation. To do justice with peace, we seek to live more like Jesus. Jesus had a focused heart, seeking what was best for the other person, no matter what. Jesus had a clean heart, free of resentment and bitterness and negativity and judgment, no matter what. Jesus had a compassionate heart, filled with love for the other person, no matter what. Living with a heart like Jesus enables us to live justice with peace. We do justice. We love kindness, and we want a new world that starts with our relationship with God. A new world that starts with each of us and our connection to God. A new world that begins when we do justice, when we love kindness, and when we walk humbly with our God. It is in the presence of the church of Jesus Christ that we will make known to those whose hearts are filled with hatred God's abhorrence for racism and injustice. Let us go together and announce the good news of peace and justice and reconciliation into the world. Do we want a new world where people are loved and respected? Do we want a new world where all have enough to eat and drink and a place to sleep? Do we want a world where peace and justice dwell in God? I do, 
I'm ready to seek and stand and work for a new world. Are you? We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall live in peace someday. A Franciscan Prayer of Blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough holy foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. communion. And if you have your juice or water in whatever container that you have at home, and your crackers or bread and have them available. Oh God, we greet you this morning and knowledge that all life is in your loving care. 
For your spirit's presence is everywhere at all times, filling all things with life and intention. We give thanks this morning for the reality that in our various locations, separated by the miles and social distance, that it is still true that in you, whom we live and move and have our being, we are together. The psalmist reminds us that there is nowhere that we can hide from your presence. And we confess that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We rest in the assurance that we are all God's children and we receive the affirmation that we belong to you, that your spirit testifies in our spirit. We are part of your family. You have given us the gift of your Holy Spirit who unites us with the saints of the past who have walked this road of faith before us through various trials and tribulations. Now come Holy Spirit and make us one across the miles and through this medium. Transform by your spirit of grace, social isolation and distance into holy community that is connected to each other by your sacred presence. Being near to us as we separate from one another, but even at our kitchen tables and coffee tables and wherever we are at the moment, that we are connected through this communion, that this table is a place where we are united. We give thanks for the sacrament in all the ways it has manifested over the centuries. We give thanks for the ways that this holy meal has transformed and evolved over the ages from once a year Passover meal that Jesus took, blessed and broke and shared with his disciples. We give thanks for all those who have celebrated the sacrament throughout history in the form of the Lord's Supper, a love feast, Eucharist, mass, communion. We give thanks for your divine presence in every place that we celebrate being the body of Christ this morning. We also give thanks for these elements. In every place that we celebrate being the body of Christ this morning, we give thanks that these elements will nourish and sustain us through difficult times. For this bread or baked goods and this cup or mug or glass jar, we give thanks and acknowledge that it is through these elements like these that our mortal bodies are nourished, strengthened, and satisfied. We take these as symbols of our provision and pray that they would be transformed from ordinary elements into signs that point us to a greater reality of your presence on earth and in all places at all times. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love we from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. May these humble offerings be transformed into symbols that participate in the reality that point to the signs of life to come. We give thanks for this bread and from the earth from which these ingredients come in humble acknowledgement that we are part of your loving creation, O oh God, and that as these elements are rooted in the earth and our very life is dependent on the goodness of your creation, you created all things good, and we are a part of that creation. And we pray this morning for those who work in the fields and the farms across this land and pray that they would know your presence this morning in a significant way during this crisis. 
Normally, we take the one loaf, we break it, and we serve it to the many. And in doing so, we symbolize the significance of our unity as the body of Christ through remembering Christ's body broken for us, and that in Christ we may be made one. But this morning, we lift up these many pieces and through this medium of social media, through this social distancing, and we ask that in Christ, the many would be one. Make this bread be for us a sign of God's presence, of Christ's presence with us, sustaining us and filling us with good things. May this symbol remind us that in our brokenness, we are to be bread for the world and to care for those who hunger physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, relationally, politically, economically, and environmentally. For your church that evermore lifts its holy hands above, offering upon every shore its pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. On the night in which Jesus took the cup, he lifted it up and giving thanks to God, he infused it with new meaning. This cup represents the life and love of Christ poured out for us. This cup symbolizes the heart of God that's filled with love and kindness and grace, and mercy and forgiveness. We give thanks for what in this cup is from the earth. We are grateful for the vines and the bushes which give fruit in due season and fill our lives with good things. Normally during the sacrament, we proclaim that there is one cup and that it is filled with goodness and love and poured out for the good of the many. This morning, we ask that by the power of God, of your presence, God, our many cups would signify that we drink deeply of the good things of God and that they would be help us remember that we look forward to the day we shall be together with all the saints for the great thanksgiving the banquet feast of, of the ages of your eternal presence may these symbols may this bread and cup remind us of your power of transformation we give thanks for the grapes and the blossoms and the berries and the beans and the and the bread we give thanks for it all for it has been sown in order for us to have it today let them let these elements today remind us that our lives like this cup and this spread are filled with your goodness and grace so that our lives may be poured out in service to others we lift up to you those in need this morning and those who are pouring out their lives in service to our hurting world at this time god of grace and mercy we ask that you transform these humble elements from mere reminders into a symbol of your presence with us and a sign of your life in us as we take these elements into ourselves Make them be for us the body of Christ as we remember that we are your body and the love of God poured out for you for good, for the good of many. Holy Spirit, we ask that by your power and your presence that we too may be transformed from the many into the one that speaks into the world of the good news of redemption of all creation in you. Until we eat and drink together again, we ask that you be with us in this time. That as we partake of these elements together through this digital way of doing communion, 
that we ask that you would unite, unite us in heart and intention so that in every place and at all times, your presence is manifest here on earth. We make ourselves available to you and to this great mystery through the ages. We pray that we are connected and we feel that connection through this Holy Communion, through the people of God, a royal priesthood of believers. In God, the many are one. In Christ, the love of God is poured out for the good of the whole world. By the power of the Spirit, these elements through this digital age is transformed into a sacred ceremony, a sacred sacrament of communion and thanksgiving across the miles from here unto eternity. So let us celebrate together. Thanks be to God who transforms these humble offerings into Christ's body, which is broken for you and for me that the many are made one and transformed into the body of Christ. The cup of goodness and love poured out for you and for me to fill with good things as you pour out your life for the good of many and the transformation of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may now take some time in prayer, and you may take the elements now if you have not already taken them with me, and just be in a place where you can connect with God.
May God the Father, our friend Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. On this Peace with Justice Sunday, let us ask what more we can do as people of faith in order to change systems, in order to remove hatred. Let us work together to be a better world. Have a blessed week.